In real life, rolling stock isn't clean, looking like new, straight out of the factory. When we say that it's rusted, it's dirty, it's all weathered. Maybe you've also gone to the trouble of weathering your bridges and scenery, but your rolling stock stands out like it's brand new. Follow me on this tutorial series on how to weather your rolling stock. So unless the car is new out of the box, it's probably dusty. And so the first thing you want to do is clean off all the dust. I just take a fluffy brush and dust it completely. But then there are always add-on parts as well. Maybe there's ladders, uh, the roof walk. Several things probably snap off. So you're going to want to take all those off that you can. It will be a lot easier to paint behind them and look much better if you do. Careful when you pull the roof walk. It may feel like it's secure, but it's undoubtedly snap-on on most of them. You can then dust underneath it. Dust is the enemy of all future paint layers we're going to put on, so it's good to make sure it's nice and clean. Next thing we're going to do, put on a clear matte finish. That will help the future coats of paint adhere to the car. You can use either Krylon or this Treehouse Studio. Any kind of matte finish should work. Spray all the sides and the ends and the top. You might want to take the wheels off before this step. I forgot to do that here. Don't overdo it. You don't want it to run, but you do want it to be covered. Then rather than waiting for it to dry, sometimes I'll use a hair dryer. But if the items I want to dry are small enough and lightweight enough, the hair dryer would blow them right off the turntable. So I use this diffuser here I found at Walmart or some similar store. That really helps spread out the force of the air while still letting the heat dry the model. The next step is to fade it. I want to take a little bit of that original color off of the paint job on the car. For that I use oil paint and I use zinc white because I learned that that is much more transparent than titanium white or other whites. And I put just a little dab out on the, in my palette, get a flat brush, damp a little bit with some thinner, then just take downward strokes from the top with the white oil. What we're trying to do is try to give the paint job a faded look before we go on to the next step. When you start, it may look like way too much. That's okay. We're going to wipe most of this off. So you want the paint to be somewhat thin. You don't want it globby and thick, or you'll probably not get enough of it off. If you get some on the rails, or you don't need it, just a paper towel with thinner, We'll remove it, or a brush with thinner. So continue to do the downward strokes on the entire model. If you want, you might want to do it in sections, it's just so it doesn't dry before you can wipe off the excess, which we'll do here in a second. This way also we'll be able to see the difference easily between the paint without the fade and the part with it. So the next step after you get a section done is to take a wide fan brush and just drag the paint straight down, trying to even it out a little bit and make sure that it, all the strokes are perfectly vertical. One last step, I use these makeup wedges. They're foam, they're somewhat absorbent, and just dry, no thinner, wiped down from, from the top even strokes till I like the way the paint looks. You can see this is now looking like faded paint. There it looks like I even took off too much. But once we compare that to the door next to it or the other side of this car, you can see now we have some faded paint. That's a real good start couldn't do this after we put rust streaks on it, for instance, so it has to be done first. Again, any touch-up you can do with a dampened brush, just to be sure it's, you don't have, you just don't want brush marks on places that 
wouldn't have any before you move on. The next step is going to be add a wash to it. And for that, I use enamel washes. They flow much better than acrylic washes, I've learned. This is a MIG version, dark brown. You can use any enamel wash you want, of course, and any color you can decide to use. I've reattached the roof walk so I can paint it more easily without holding it. So we'll take a little bit of the enamel on the flat brush and start brushing it on the roof walk. You don't want to have the brush heavily loaded. You don't want it pooling in the low areas, just enough to slightly cover. If you get too much, just spread that around, and if need be, dab it off with a Q-tip or a paper towel. The whole idea of what we're doing here is creating a base of dirt and wear. Weathering needs to be done in layers, and you, you can't start with the top layer of rust. You need to build up slowly. This dark wash will help build one more layer before we move to the next step. Once I'm done with the roof walk, I'll remove it and then do the same wash on the entire roof, making sure I don't use too much enamel. I'll finish this roof and then in the next video we'll start adding rust to the roof.